Hello and greetings from Iceland. It's been a while since my last video, but uh, I just got back from a long tour that started as a volcano tour to the Reykjanes Peninsula and uh, on the way there the eruption kind of uh, faded out but uh, I did some flying around anyway like I will show you but this uh, tour was also about to get some of the last uh, summer colors for a large project that I'm working on but uh, while I was on my way to the south the summer kind of uh, faded out as well it started snowing in the mountains, mountain roads closed, the whole package. But the photo tour as such was, however, a success. I needed some uh, volcano footage from different regions, in some cases to finish videos I've been working on, and also to make my updates uh, more interesting, always with something fresh. And the time lapse I used to open this video with, it was shot on September 11th, but this one was shot uh, three days earlier when I arrived and we can still see a lot of pollution from the craters. And as usual, I'm always welcoming comments from experts about uh, what my camera is seeing through this time-lapse format and this is why I love to use it. But during this tour I didn't get a chance to film some of the orange stuff coming up from the new craters. But there were plenty of others coming up with plenty of such footage so it's not as... Uh, there wasn't a chance to see it, but less people were going after volcano footage that includes people eating berries by flowing lava. So that turned out to be my job, and I was actually quite pleased to be able to film the last of the lava flow, as it was moving forward very slowly, little over three kilometers away from the highway to the international airport from Reykjavik. And it was quite remarkable to see the new lava fill up some of the fractures on the plate boundaries and very symbolic as well since uh, this is how Iceland uh, grows larger every year. It's growing to the west and the east and uh, that has to be fantastic news for travelers because it demonstrates that we will only have to wait for a few hundred million years for cheaper plane tickets to Iceland. And the biggest question we have now is... Uh, Will the land uplift due to the inflow from the lower magma chamber up to the magma reservoir at the four to five kilometers depth be enough to pressurize the system yet again to come up with another volcanic eruption? And it's just too early to say with good accuracy right now, especially since it's been proven that the inflow before the last eruption was not as stable as before the others. But uh, it might be wishful thinking on my behalf to bring that up, or if this is coming to an end soon, we just don't know. We have been witnessing some kind of shift as for the location, so we had the question, will the next eruption move further to the northeast? And it was a bit of a surprise to see this eruption come up at this end of the Sundunjúkar crater row, and it also means a new challenge for us to tackle, especially when it comes to the nearby town Vogar. But uh, I'm not saying that uh, the town Vogar will suffer the same fate as Grindavík. Technically it is possible, but unlikely, unless the fires move uh, even further northeast. So what are the odds? If uh, we uh, look at the geological history, we can find small spots of lava, from little fissures that stretch uh, all the way here. This uh, might be the easternmost part of the Sundhnukar Kretero, but it's hard to say. This area has been overlapped with uh, lava from this uh, very dominating shield volcano formation, and uh, we don't know what is hidden under it. So we don't know how the complete Sundhnukar fissure swarm actually looks like. And as for lava entering the town of Vogar, it would only be possible if the lava would come up further east than it did the last time, because there is this downward slope, so this area here could actually work as a huge lava storage or just by the Grindavik intersection. And that area seems to be a grappen, the land there is very broken, with impressive fractures, and due to the downward slope, the fire would have to come up uh, 
a few kilometers uh, further east in order to pose a serious threat to the town. But the town has, however, no protection like Grindavik has now. It's only the airport road that could hold back the lava for a while. But again, this is still considered to be quite unlikely scenario. But due to the proximity of the lava to the town, I'm not seeing a new building plots sell at the same price as it did before this last eruption. So this is something to think about. If there is this new trend and the next eruption will take place even further to the northeast. But as for Grindavik, that is good news. And there is even more pressure now to open up the town for tourists because all danger areas have been closed with fences already and the local business owners are getting ready to open their doors for guests. And the football house is one of the buildings that was hit bad. It sits directly above the fracture from November 10th and there is this big crack that is running through the building. So the plan just a few months ago was to demolish it. But uh, the discussion now is about uh, if it's a suitable building as a museum because uh, earthquakes and plate boundaries, they don't get uh, any more visual than this and uh, it's in a building. And this is how I know the local people. The building might not be usable for football, but it might be the best building in the world now after it's been secured to demonstrate the forces at work, constantly splitting my country apart. But uh, I am realistic and we know that the community as such will never be the same and the town might be evacuated many times before this chapter is over and there might come an eruption that uh, ruins everything. But this shift to the northeast gives them a little hope although it's uh, not good news for Vogar. So they are fighting back there in Grindavik mentally and that's a sign of life and hope. And as usual, after eruptions, there will be less news coming from there for some time, since uh, it's less uh, tension there now. If the inflow of magma will be steady and continue, we might expect the next eruption to come up in November, even December, but it's too early to say now. But somehow, I have the feeling that we might get some news from other volcano systems sooner than later. We forgot the fact for a while that uh, before the events on the Reykjanes Peninsula, we get volcanic eruptions every four years or so on average here in Iceland. And if we don't count in those events on the Reykjanes Peninsula, or this uh, big event that occurs every 800 years or so, the last eruption elsewhere occurred in 2014. But uh, where will the next one occur? And my guess now is the area from the Aska volcano on the highlands where enormous amount of magma has been accumulating. Constant land uplift for two years now. And I'm also looking at uh, some of the volcanoes under Vatnajökull glacier, especially Grimsvatn volcano. It is long overdue and likely to uh, do something soon. And the Bárðarbunga volcano is also making some moves. But the surprise of the year 2024, it has to be a Katla volcano. This is the bridge that we had to close a few weeks ago during a large flood from the glacier. And uh, some experts even say that uh, a small eruption occurred under the glacier. And there was actually another flood there just days ago, way smaller. So this is not over. And what we see here is the blowing sand between the highway and the glacier-capped volcano, Katla. And the little vegetation that was there is now gone, and no one really knows what is hiding under the ice. So those would be my top uh, picks if I were to guess uh, where the next big eruption occurs. But uh, Hekla volcano is always the wild card. She can take off without any warnings at all. And Hekla has already inflated more than before the last eruption 24 years ago. But it's been like that for years, so it's impossible to say where this is leading us. The only thing we know for sure is that uh, if uh, Hekla reloads for another 24 years, or even longer, we don't want to be close when she blows her head off. So Hekla remains as one of Iceland's most unpredictable volcano, 
the only volcano where I don't even try to guess what is next. But uh, back to my volcano tour. This time I spent uh, five days in South and West Iceland and as often before this summer the weather was teasing me quite a bit. But the tour started in West Iceland where I needed footage from a system that has been waking up a little by little and I actually came back with something closer to rain and fog mood so I actually need uh, another trip there for uh, more details but it's just so much to see in this valley. And as for the Reykjavik part of the trip, I came back with the new thermal footage from the hot road where highway number one has been heating up near the volcano Hengill. This was my trip number five or six with the thermal drone and I have a reason to make a new video from there. That is for sure, so I will try to find time for that very soon. I was also shooting some city footage to use in different projects like I was capturing clips for a long video that I've been working on every now and then and that project covers the volcanoes around the city, we have plenty of them and I have no clue about it how I will present that project now. Whenever I'm lifting up the drone around the city I see something new and the story grows larger so right now I'm just picking up bits and pieces and I have the feeling that at some point in time this footage will be very helpful for my channel due to new events. But uh, until then, some of that footage will be used in my other videos and I got fairly lucky with filming conditions in Reykjavik this time. But uh, when it looked as uh, it was going to change and the weather forecast promised me two good days in a row on the south and east coast, I decided to drive back to North Iceland the longer way. And I actually drove the south coast a month ago in poor visibility, but this time I captured some fine uh, tourist shots and uh, lots of volcano footage that I desperately needed. And it took me two days to drive back home, and the second day I was more or less chasing the enormous Askja fisher swarm. It's around 200 kilometers long, and uh, those are shots that will be very helpful when it comes to my coverage about Askja Volcano because it looks as I will need every bit of video I can get from there. So I have a more unprocessed footage now than ever before, which is in a way a disappointment because my unprocessed folder looked excellent just two months ago. But I do however have plenty of worthy video subjects that will last me for months. But the short term plan now is to use the next days to finish at least two videos that require more work than my updates. First the video about my channel where I explain even better what this tour was doing for my channel and if mother nature won't interrupt me too much and I don't have to do any updates I will be publishing my video about the village of Vogarsun for my town series. I actually finished that script months ago, but somehow I never found the time to do the voiceover and editing, which turned out to be a good thing since the last eruption is going to change how we look at this town and its existence into the longer future. And it's a few days work to finish those two videos but uh, I want to go out again soon, this time of year, from September 15th to October 15th. The light is uh, extremely good, especially for uh, documentary filming. When the sun is low, so it's not as I will be locking myself in with the editing computer soon, because uh, I need to be ready to move on the road again soon. And I will explain that uh, better in my next video hopefully in two days. And uh, with that, I am sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.